Okay, we're in a special meeting. Tonight we've uh, kind of established a little bit of a process to fill this position that's uh, currently vacant. And in that process, we decided to uh, post some questions, actually 13 questions on the city website and give an opportunity for candidates to uh, fill out this questionnaire and get back with us. And then we've asked the candidates to be here tonight uh, to do just a simple interview. Uh, the cabinet, candidates are not required to fill out the questionnaire. We do have uh, two candidates have filled out questionnaires. And we have those. I think everybody's had a chance to review those and read through them. Um, so I guess the process now is we would like to just do a simple interview process. We'll allow each candidate basically three to five minutes to come up, uh, explain a little bit about themselves and the reason why that they would like to fill this position as a city commissioner. Following that. Uh, we would like for you to remain at the podium and entertain some, some interview questions from the city commissioners. Try to keep it informal as possible, but we would like to ask a few questions also. So um, we can just do it randomly. Whoever would like to approach first, go ahead and approach, because I'm not sure who all, I know the three of the position, three of the people are here, and there's possibly others. So. Anyone that's interested can go ahead and approach and introduce yourself and we'll start the process. Don't rush. And I'm going to talk a little bit about myself. I was uh, born and raised here in Chinook, Kansas, and I'm proud to call Chinook my hometown. I have a bachelor's degree in uh, business finance from uh, Pittsburgh State University, and upon graduating, I was ecstatic to find a job, good job back in my hometown. I feel my financial background could be a real asset when it comes to looking at our city's budget. I have family, friends, investments, and memories here in Chinook, and I say that to say I'm committed to this town. I truly believe that this town has a lot of good things going for it, and I'd love to see it grow. If I'm selected, my goal would be to do what's best for Chinook. I think our number one priority is to get more businesses here so we can create more jobs as the community Chinook's growth. I know I'm young, but I feel that is to my advantage. I can bring a fresh perspective to our meetings and work on getting our younger voters more involved. I am fully capable of researching topics and situations that I'm not familiar with and making an educated decision on the matter. In closing, one thing I've always said is I want to make a positive difference. That is why if you select me for city commissioner, I will battle do my best to make a positive difference for Shane. Thank you. Any questions for Kyle? Well, since you're the first one, these guys will get a little advantage on you, but uh, my question is, one of my questions is, why didn't you try to run for commissioner nine months ago? Um, so, uh, I just got settled back in Chinook. I just bought my first house, and I've just really got settled down since I've been back from college, so. Okay. Uh, second one, just your thought of, uh, progress we're having a meeting right now about fiber to the home and it's going to be a very expensive project just what are your feelings about that good bad don't know need to study more I need to study more. Okay. Um, in your present job how do you communicate your values and your vision to others I believe uh, leadership is based on uh, your influence over others and I feel that I'm just really, I'm really open with my coworkers, and I always explain to them what I expect and what I believe in. And they've always just been open with me, and I make it comfortable for them to work. We're going through a new city manager search currently. Uh, what, what uh, abilities or assets do you bring to the table to help me with that process? I just feel I can offer a different view and a different perspective from our younger generation that may be helpful in finding a new candidate. Job. Kyle, on number five, you answered that uh, the, the question is what do you think is the greatest challenge to our city? And, and you selected that you thought that the greatest challenge is the lack of job offerings in our community. Um, kind of explain that. Give us some ideas on, on what you think. How, how can, you, can the city commission or the city promote job growth or I just think for some incentives and some other businesses to put, set up shop here that we can have 
more jobs available, so our town can grow in number. Anybody else? Have you ever watched a city commission meeting and, and sat there and thought, gee, I would say this or I would say that? Or, or uh, how, how, do you, how do you think about that? Yeah, I've, I've had some different opinions and stuff. How dare you? <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you'd like to add? No. Thanks for your consideration. All right, thank you. My name is uh, Rudy Draper. I uh, just recently moved to Chanu from Pittsburgh, where I had lived for the last 35 years. I'm 35 years old. I'll be 36 on Thursday. Uh, I am divorced. I have two children. I was the former mayor and city commissioner of Pittsburgh, Kansas for six years, 2007 to 2013, April this year. I work at Hilo Industries with Kevin. And today was the first I had actually heard of this uh, appointed position. I heard it probably two hours before I talked to you, Mr. Mayor. And, you know, it's, it's something that has been you know driven me over the years I've been a community servant I you know obviously the pay is not great so it's we're not in it for the pay you know Pittsburgh we didn't get paid a dime so it was a non-paid position I sat on very many committees I was on the economic development committee trash committee I don't know if you guys remember the trash issue in Pittsburgh but I had it I was the head of the trash committee there and that was a serious issue that we resolved peacefully, although it did uh, have its hostile moments. Um, I spent 18 years so far in the military, eight active duty with the Marine Corps, and I'm in my 10th, 11th year in the Kansas National Guard. I've been on multiple combat deployments and have been wounded in action, which was February of 2006. I also uh, formed a committee while sitting on the uh, city commission in my first year as a commissioner. I was 28 years old, I believe. I was the youngest elected commissioner that the city had ever had. And I formed the Housing and Neighborhoods Committee, which now is an example for the state to what the state uses. I won't take all the credit because we had PSU involved. We had uh, Fort Scott Community College, and we had multiple entities like the chamber that represented on on that, that committee uh, it's a basic overview of who i am any, any questions well, i won't ask you why you didn't run last time since you weren't here <laughs> no I've, I've been here about four and a half five months so i'm there and i took um, a job opportunity with hilo that was what the move was for um, what's go back to the fiber thing hugely expensive could be popular or unpopular don't know what what's your opinion on that need to study more just, just like the uh, first candidate answered I have not done my homework I'll be honest I mean this was a last minute deal for me and I've been wanting to get involved and I need to do my homework Pittsburgh, a first class city? Yes, it is. She okay. needs a second class. Yes, it is. Um, and, and just to clarify something, and Rudy did say this earlier that today was what, about 3 o'clock, 3 30 was the first time yes, we were there. Really I, I had to drill this last weekend, so, and I guess it was in the paper Thursday, Friday, and I was gone all weekend and didn't read the paper till today. So, um, how was how do you think you can transition your experience from Pittsburgh to Chennai? I mean, do you see similarities or differences? Or I see issues that are similar, but I'm sure there will be an adjustment period that I can acclimate to. But there are some issues that I see just from me being an outside view of the city and a, a new face to the city is like the first candidate said as well, the economic development issue. I do think the economic development here is a stable development. I uh, signed a non-disclosure agreement, so I can't talk about a certain company, 
that was wanting to come to Pittsburgh and I worked dil diligently on that issue. But I believe that uh, dilapidated housing is an issue here. Um, the cleanliness of the city, like Pittsburgh had a clean sweep program that we started about two years ago and it made a tremendous difference in the way the city looks. And there's things like that that aren't major issues, but are issues that directly involve economic development. Economic development isn't way up here, and you think about all the glory about getting a big company coming in, it's about who you have here and keeping them, keeping them stable and working from the bottom up. And bottom, I mean housing. Housing companies want to come in, they're going to look at what you got in neighborhoods. I mean, companies that are here want to grow, but are they going to get the employees that they need to stabilize their company and fill the positions they need with good quality employees to maybe make that jump in pay to have quality, you know, great quality of life in the community? Okay. Um, question, I guess, since you just recently moved here, do um, you own a home here in town? No, I'm currently renting, but I'm looking. I'm not in a big hurry right now, but I, I still own a house in Pittsburgh I'm trying to sell, and as soon as that sells, then I'm going to get serious about buying a home here. And I guess that's a question I have for you then, David Brick. Could he be a city commissioner without owning a house? I mean, I know it's a yeah, house no, here. There's but no requirement of, of that you have to own a home. Most of my college done at Pittsburgh State University, then I kept going on deployment after deployment. I, I was like, I gotta get my education done, but I'm never gonna get it done because I was in combat for seven and a half years of the last 12 years of my life. So I finally did some online research at American University, which is a big university, a well-known university, but I did get my bachelor's online while I was deployed in Baghdad. Actually, Greg, to answer your question, it was in, I think, the statute I sent out to the commissioners in advance, but qualifications of the mayor and commissioners. The mayor and each of said commissioners shall be a citizen of the United States and a qualified elector of such city. That's pretty broad. Does that mean you just have to establish residency? Yes. Since you've been here such a short time, you've given us a little bit of uh, thoughts of what you've seen so far. What would be a vision you'd like to see happen? With the comments I made about my my outside view of the right. city. Well, on the dilapidated housing, I think first and foremost you need a study group to see exactly what you have. I'm sure, like, I'm going to reference Pittsburgh a lot because I know Pittsburgh. Right. And we had a large university, and 51% of the housing was rental houses. So you're going to have issues there. Now, Chanu has a community college, not a big university, you know. And I'm sure the rental housing isn't 51%, but I'm sure it's up there probably 30 40%. I, have, you know, I have no idea. I haven't done my research on it, but first and foremost, you got to form a study group, see where you're at and see what kind of a plan you can come up with to maybe get a timeline to fix the issues, see what you can do. If there's grants out there, I mean, I've written probably 30, 40 grants for the city of Pittsburgh, although we had a full-time grant writer, I, I wrote them and he revised them and made them correct form, you know. So I'm not an expert on it, but I know what I'm doing and how to get money to start these programs, I mean, first and foremost, you need a study. I mean, but the cleanliness of the city can be done with a community-driven program. It doesn't have to be all this elaborate committee stuff. You know, you can form it and take volunteers, have businesses promote it, and have everyday citizens just say, hey, you see a piece of trash on the, paper, on, on the pavement, pick it up. 
I mean, we, I want my city that I live in, which is, I call home Chanu now. I want it to look good. I want to be proud of it. And that's what I strive for. And that's why I'm here today. Anybody else? Anything you'd like to add, Rudy? Okay, thank you for your time. Appreciate it. First of all, I want to thank you for the opportunity to come up, to present myself, and for your consideration in being a commissioner of Chinook, Kansas. I did uh, fill out your questionnaire. Hopefully, all of you got it. I had an opportunity to review my responses. It tells you a little bit about how I feel on certain subjects and my viewpoint. As far as my background goes, I graduated high school here in 1977. I left when I joined the military in 98 or 78. Served 20 years in the Air Force, traveling the world to various different positions. Retired in 1998, where I entered corporate America. I was a junior executive at Transworld Airlines. Stayed with them until they dissolved in 2001, the end of 2001. Um, and then basically started following my passion of entertainment. Became somewhat semi-retired ever since. Uh, three years, three and a half years ago, as you well know, uh, I decided to move back to Chinook. It was um, something that was calling me to come here. And it's always a pride that I've had to be in Chinook. Ever since I arrived here, I hit the ground running, established business, bought a home right away, built a home, got married, uh, stabilized, uh, business owner, owned four properties. Um, I am a 1990 graduate of Southern Illinois University. I have a bachelor's degree in industrial technology and business management. I also have two associate's degrees. One is in teaching and the other one is in research and analysis. I have used all these degrees at one point or another. I have taught Votech schools, junior colleges, and different types of trade schools in that environment. Um, I feel that my position here in Chinook is one to bring forth the leadership skills that I have learned over the years, put them to use, share my vision, bring forth a new viewpoint, a different viewpoint, and a forward-looking viewpoint with both tactical and strategical values and points and plans. Thank you for your opportunity. I now welcome any questions that you may have. Would you like me to in the fiber optics program? Being in technology and one of my hobbies being technology, I firmly believe that technology is our future. I was very impressed when I got here and found out that there even was a fiber program in place. I think that's one of the things that we should capitalize on. We should utilize it to our advantage because that's going to be a future backbone of which we can build on. And now you want to know why I want to do this? No. Well, why didn't you run? Why didn't I run? Nine months ago, whenever okay. it was. There was two elections that came about during the time of which I returned to Chinook, Kansas. I was actually asked both times to run for commissioner. Uh, the second time I felt I didn't know enough about the community and I wasn't sure enough about Chinook to be able to represent and make sound decisions. The second time I was asked and I gave it very serious consideration. And this was the time where both Greg and Martha were elected for the first time. It wasn't until uh, it came actually down to filling out the application that I felt that it wasn't in my best interest at that time because I felt I was too new at the TV studio process, running Channel 4, that the conflict of interest might be too much at that particular point. I have thoroughly researched and consulted with legal uh, consult that is not a conflict of interest. Um, my company that owns the broadcasting is not a conflict, and I don't feel that what I do can be a conflict or will be a conflict with the city of Chanute or the city commission position. I was talking about just nine months ago, not one very brand new, two, three and a half years. I'm talking just last January. In this last election? Yeah. Um, I gave that very serious consideration. Um, I will tell you the reason why I didn't is because of the way that the platform finally came together. There was a completely new platform and your existing platform. The controversial sides that I found between them both, I did not feel that I wanted to be in the middle of because you had a set of brand new people that wanted to basically come in and take over the commission. I did not want to be part of that. 
I did not feel that I wanted to take away an opportunity from the existing commissioners that wanted to continue with the progress that you were making already. Well, I'm, and I'm not trying to argue, but when you signed up, we didn't know about the other platform until way, you know, towards the end. Uh, you know, you sign up, what, January 10th or something? What is it? You have to have your... Some date early in January. Yeah. So, I mean, you, you, what I'm asking is you could have put your name in in January. We didn't know about the platform until late March. I just was curious why. I mean, I understand you read what you're saying with that part, and it was kind of. I, I did take some time, and I did talk with, at that time, the city manager. We talked in great detail about the possibility of doing that, the best interest of myself and the city. Um, I did bounce that back and forth. I did not talk to any of the existing commissioners for obvious reasons. I did talk with other people in the community. I feel that I would have had the support. I can't tell you whether I would have won or not. I just did not feel that it was the right time then. We're uh, Wednesday. We start interviewing candidates for the city manager. What can you bring to the table in that process? Again, a lot that I know about Chanute already. A lot of what the people are looking for. Um, a lot about the economic growth and the development committees. Um, my future ba or my background being in the military and corporate involvement. My interfacing with high-level CEOs, political figures, celebrities, those types of things. I'm not afraid of the camera, obviously. Um, so when I look at the future manager of this city, I'm looking as well as my future as a resident in this city long term. Anything else? Anything else? Anything you'd like to add? I just want to thank you again for the opportunity and consideration. I would look forward to working with you for many years to come, learning and taking that experience and making Chanute a very proud place to live, work, and play. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Okay, anyone else? Okay. Uh, I talked to Jim Chappell last night. He called me on the phone. He's he wants to throw his hat in the ring also. I don't know if he called you know, the commissioners and, and talked to you. Uh, because of a family medical situation, he's out of town tonight, so he's not able to be here. But he did uh, want to convey his interest in, in applying for this position. So uh, is there, was there anyone else that had expressed any interest that I'm not aware of that you were aware of? David, David Williams, Williams Electric called me we could go Friday uh, and ask to have his name put in. I'm not sure why he didn't fill up fucking air show up and thing else. I don't know if he did call and request that. So. Okay. And he had, had approached me after the uh, memorial dedication for the veterans and had introduced himself and said he was interested. Um, but that was the last time I had any communication with him also. So, okay. I guess we can make the assumption he's still interested in the position. So. Ed Cox got a hold of me um, at the uh, veterans parade and said that he'd be interested. Okay. okay. Well, I think we've made it pretty clear that uh, you know, at our previous meeting what we expected as far as candidates, if they were really interested, they would make an effort to be here tonight, make an effort to fill out the questionnaire. And under the circumstances you know, with, uh, with Mr. Chapel as far as the family medical issue, and, and uh, I think with Rudy Draper being out of town and his situation a little bit different, so I think we can make an, two exceptions there. The other individuals, uh, in my mind, or did, I would discount them from the process, but uh, that's up to well, I, everybody I else, however you want to uh, approach this. So I guess at this point, uh, we'll just basically open the floor up for nominations. 
I don't want to flounder at all. And I would like to go ahead and get somebody appointed tonight if we can come to some type of consensus. We have four votes here. If if it's a, a deadlock, well then by statute, the city attorney is the tiebreaker. Um, so. So is this something that we do where the candidates leave the room? I know it's all in the day. Day. whatever I was on there. I believe it's all open meeting, yep. public session, yep. everything's. Right yeah, I'm just, front. I'm just asking. No, yeah. no, it's a valid question. No, I, I sat right back there whenever I, I got. I know board, that so. you did that, but this might be something different. Uh, you know, just because you did uh, it that way a few years ago, I'm I, thinking it should be a little bit more private myself. But. I don't think. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Mr. Gray, but I don't think we can go into an executive session since no, this is No, you cannot go into position. an executive session to discuss elected personnel, only non-elected personnel. Yeah. So, I mean, we can nominate an individual or we can discuss the candidates. It's out of whatever process is a pleasure of the commission. I like, like the fact that we got some new people, new ideas. Also, know uh, that was my question, and I can understand some of my, you know, Jim didn't lose by very many votes, and uh, uh, he was interested in running, so kind of, uh, I kind of lean towards that way because he did run, but I do like the new blood and people who get some new ideas, too. At least I don't think we can go wrong with what, what we have. I'll be honest with you. Thank you, guys. I can go any direction. Good. Well, oh, I'll go ahead and make a nomination. Then. I'll go ahead and nominate uh, Rudy Draper, and based on his experience at the city of Pittsburgh as a city uh, commissioner and a, and a city mayor. Can I ask a couple more questions? Sure. I had time to think a little bit. <laughs> Rudy, I got a question for you. Family, are you married? Has no, kids? I'm not married, but I do have two daughters. You have two daughters? Yes, um, I, do. I know you just moved here four or five months ago. Yeah. Uh, you left Pittsburgh. It sounds like you're pretty well grounded in Pittsburgh before you left there. Yeah. Why all of a sudden the, the change? Well, I got engaged, and my girlfriend at the time uh, lived in Iola and lived in the Schnute area at times, and you know, we, we decided to move in together and we chose Chanu mainly because of the job opportunity I got with Hilo. Uh, the general manager there offered me a good job with good pay and I decided to jump on it. It was better than what I was making in Pittsburgh and I wanted a new adventure in my life. You know, I accomplished everything that I wanted to accomplish in Pittsburgh and you know, I left nothing behind. And I thought, well, this is the time. If I'm going to do it in my life, I'm going to do it now. I mean, I'd had all my crazy fun being in Iraq, Afghanistan, and Africa. And I wanted something more family oriented, a smaller community where I could raise my kids. And, you know, just Chanute right now, it, it feels right. So that's, that's why I chose Chanute over Iola. There was Wichita, I had a good opportunity with the company there. But I wanted the small town feel, and you know, it's it's just eventually I was going to get into politics again. I was talking to uh, the mayor earlier today about that, and I, this opportunity came up, and I I jumped on. So you're still in branch of the service still. I'm in the National Guard. How many more years do you have? That? Well, to retirement, I have about 14 months. And, and will there be the possibility you'll be deployed again? I am non-deployable at this time due to my combat wounds. Okay. So anything, a state activation like a winter storm, tornadoes, yes, there's possibilities. I'm still eligible for that. And being a senior leader and a senior NCO in the military, I like to take care of my guys. And I'm a military man and I want to go where they go there's just if they get deployed I'm, it's going to be depressing for me because I can't go with my guys but on state activations if I have a choice I got to tell you the truth I'm going to go one comment I'd like to make before we uh, 
side on this is I, I would encourage no matter what happens tonight with this vote, all of you to run at the next election. I, I, I was very impressed by the applicants that we've got, and I, I would encourage everyone to run at the next election. I, I really do because uh, the better quality people and the more quality people we can get to run, the better our overall city is going to be for it. So I appreciate that. And new thoughts. Yeah, definitely. I mean, it, and this is not an easy decision by any means because we've got very good quality candidates. You know, they're here tonight once, and also that have expressed interest that are not here tonight. So we've got a nomination out. I just, it needs to be seconded before we can vote on it. So if it, if it doesn't. Receive, Actually, I think the process we use, the nominations don't work. If we use the same process you used in picking a mayor and vice mayor, we didn't need um, seconds to the nomination. Once everybody was done nominating, you just vote. Okay. Is there any other nominations? I'll nominate Chapel. Anybody else? Okay, so I, I assume we call for a vote in order of the nominations. Dave? That's how you want to proceed, yes. Okay. All right, all those in favor of uh, Mr. Draper indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed? I shouldn't say I'm not opposed to him by any means. Okay. Oh, so we, you want a nay? Yes. If we, okay, nay. I'll go with a nay for now, I guess. Say I'll turn that so it's two to two. And really, that's what the statute, let me read that to you. Um, because it, I think the way the statute reads, it does involve uh, you as commissioners reaching agreement upon such suitable person. Here's what it says. Uh, the, the remaining members of the Board of Commissioners within 10 days after the occurrence of the vacancy shall elect some suitable person to fill the vacancy for the balance of the unexpired term of such office. If the remaining members cannot agree upon such suitable person, then they shall call in the city attorney shall cast a decisive vote. In other words, the way I read and the way I've always interpreted that to past commissions is it's designed to let you as the four remaining commissioners work at this until you have reached agreement on a suitable person. If, if and only when you've decided you can't reach an agreement, would I then be called in? So it's got to be 100%? No, no, it just needs a majority. So, but I think what I'm saying is that says if the remaining or cannot agree upon such suitable person, which implies you are going to work together, to reach agreement on the suitable person. So you're at impasse now, the statute says work on reaching an agreement. Well, I'd like to hear how the other two. I, I think that's what I would like to do. I'd go ahead and call for a vote on Chapel and then, and then uh, Conklin and then we'll just, and then we'll go from there. So all those in favor of Chapel indicate by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed? Nay. Nay. Yeah, I, oh, so we're voting on each one? Yep, I can vote, go vote on each one. So I can vote for three of them? If I want to vote yay, yay, yay for all three? Yeah. <laughs> 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 it, it doesn't make really? sense. It's, kind of, it's, it's more, of a, more of a process elimination. It's, it's yes. kind of what I'm thinking. Um, then I'll vote yay for chapel. <laughs> two, two. Okay. Mr. Conklin. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 
Those opposed? Nay. Are you figuring this all out now with all these numbers? Write her down. We do have Tina present to keep a record as a city clerk. She's also present to swear in again. <laughs> 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 if we can select one tonight. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'll do so it. I guess I'll, this I'll point. make it easy. I'll make it easy. Well. Chapel obviously didn't get a resounding deal, and that's, you know, it's kind of lean towards him. Um, I'll, I think Rudy's got good ideas. Chris, I think he do fine. I, uh, he's got a lot of experience as I would go. You already had two with him, right? Every, everybody's got two. And two. So, what I'm saying is if you do it again, I go three, then there we are, right? Yes. Well, no. <laughs> I think you still all have to keep the same votes you had, but you can't say that until you vote. Well, right. So, I'm, I'm, I'm I'm I understand, but I'm it, shocked guess, if it changes. For what me. I was going to say is, do we need to ask for more, some more questions, or do we need to have some more discussion? I, over the I was, I was curious. I mean, my whole deal was people not running, not putting the time in. And then getting appointed whenever the opportunity was there. Obviously, Rudy couldn't do that. That that opportunity was there for everybody else, and Chapel did do it. He didn't lose by very much. That's why I was wanting to bring him in. Um, I understand the fresh idea thing, and that's why, you know, with with Rudy, he wasn't here to run in the election. Um, he's got past experience. Two of you were yay for him. I think you'd be great. So that's why I was like you said, you know. Okay, so you're changing your vote. No, well, no, we're going to revote. We just discussed. Yeah, we're just having some discussion on the, on the candidates. Okay. So, is any other discussion before I call for votes again? Yeah, thoughts. Gonna, so we gonna, can vote. We're going to go down. We're, we're at impasse, basically. Okay. But we're not going to call in the, the attorney yet because we've had some discussion. So we're not, now we're going to go back through and vote again. Okay. Okay. We can start. No, just start out. We'll start right we'll start from <laughs> the order of nominations. Okay. Mr. Draper, all those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those are nay. Nine. Three to one. Okay. We have a simple majority. There's no sense of going any farther. Correct? That is the process. It may seem a little awkward, but that lets you all make the decision, which is what the statute anticipates. Okay. Rudy, you have been selected if you're willing to accept. I accept. Okay. Tina? Would you please swear in our new city commissioner? Chris and Kyle, I hope you guys run, so I'd like to see some too. new people up here. Too. Thank you all for coming in tonight. Thank you very much. Why you want to get Huh? It's you and me, isn't it? If you will raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I read your directly. Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? Do you solemnly swear that I will support the Constitution of the United States? And the Constitution of the State of Kansas? And the Constitution of the State of Kansas? And faithfully discharge the duties of City Commissioner of Sheena, Kansas? And faithfully discharge the duties of City Commissioner of the City of Sheena, Kansas? So help me God. So help me God. Stay for the rest of the night. Yes, yes, <laughs> he can. <laughs> he may not have been on his schedule. <laughs>